everyone. Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. And today I'm sitting down with Philip Passu from the new CBS drama, The Code. The show follows the military's brightest minds who tackle the toughest legal challenges faking, facing the U.S. Marine Corps. Sue plays Lieutenant Harper Lee, a highly capable lawyer who's eager to take on bigger cases. Take a look. For Philip Passu. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's raining, and I know sometimes it sucks to leave the house when it's raining, so that makes it even more special. No, this is amazing. Like, if I'm going to leave my house in the rain, <laughs> it's got to be to come here. It's got to be for a good reason. Yes. And to talk about a good show. The code is so great. I got to check out the first couple episodes, and I know the fans are really responding to it, too, I've seen on social. Yeah, it's yeah. really exciting. I mean, it, what's what's so great about it is like, you know, you put your heart into something for months and months and months, and then it's done, and you're sort of just like waiting around to see how people take it. It's, yeah. it's great. And I think it's such an interesting um, perspective because obviously we know the military has their own legal system, but very rarely do we get to sort of see the inner workings of it, especially when it comes to big themes and topics like we just saw a clip about sexual assault in the military. And so what is it like being on a show that's actually tackling those from like a unique or different perspective? Yeah, well, to, to be a little bit more clear with this one, this one is potentially sexual assault. Uh, it is assault, um, an assault against a female Marine. And I think, um, you know, like you see in the clip, it's like, for Harper, it's like a no-brainer. You know, it's because she's a woman mm -hmm. that this is happening to her. Motives aside, that is the motive. Right. And I think, um, you know, clearly we've come such a long way. Um, we've made a lot of strides. But, um, you know, their justice needs to be sought everywhere in all sorts of places. So I feel like what's so great about this Marine background of having, you know, judge advocates who are Marines first, lawyers second, is that the stakes are high. It's a little bit different than civilian law. Um, so you're working on really interesting cases that wouldn't necessarily be existing in, in um, the civilian world. Or there's just an understanding or education that the civilian world doesn't quite have, especially, I think the first episode was about traumatic brain injuries, and there's just a certain sensitivity, I think, that it was handled with, given that it was something so prominent in yeah. the military. Yeah, I mean, what I think is great is that we look at these issues not as there's a right and a wrong, there's a winner and a loser, but that there's a lot of gray area here and like a lot of really tough questions that you have to ask, whether you're on prosecution or on defense or whether you're investigating, that you have to... Um, you really have like an open mind at this and at the same time stick to your integrity and the morals that that the core asks of you and you see with these lawyers too they sometimes if it if they see that it is on the other side they won't stop that down like they really just want the justice yeah i mean they're they're seeking justice above yeah, all yeah um and what's so interesting about these judge advocates is like they're oftentimes going up against each other in court they're friends they work in the same office but you know um some characters are on defense and then they switch to prosecution so you get to see the cases from both sides and you know a great to me a great conflict is always like there's no winner or loser that we sort of feel for everybody, that there's not a bad guy, that you're like, you're literally just, you're conflicted. Um, and that's how we like learn and, and shape our lives and grow and become better people is by trying to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Let's talk about Lieutenant Harper Lee. First of all, the name. I mean, it, it's not a coincidence. Um, yes, I think that the writers and, and the creators have definitely intentionally chosen her name to be Harper Lee, which is great and amazing because it does give a little nod to To Kill a Mockingbird and one of the greatest uh, lawyer characters of all time, Atticus Finch. Um, but yes, we do talk about it, we joke about it. There's some great jokes in episode 103 about her name. <laughs> Um, you know, she says that her parents, like, it never occurred to them, which is hilarious. It makes it better. It, yeah, it makes it even better. And she herself, like, is maybe, like, putting on a front, like, maybe we're not sure if she's actually read the book. But maybe she has, like, you know, it's fun. Right, because at that point she has to say she's read the book no matter what. Exactly, Yeah, yes. no backing down from Everyone that. will always be like, oh, Harper Lee. And she's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But tell us about your character. What's her role in this office? Um, Harper is new to the judge advocate office. She's been here about nine months, I think. And um, at this point, you know, she's really just started working on 
on these cases hands on, like getting to get up in a courtroom in front of people and do um, an argument in front of a judge, which like thinking about it, like that's terrifying. I mean, like I'm terrified en enough as an actor to like have to get up somewhere and say my lines, let alone like argue on behalf of somebody's life or death, you know what I mean? Like it, the stakes are super high. Um, but I, for Harper, I think her, her, her um, what drives her is like her desire to really prove that she can do this job, especially coming from, so she comes from a, a family of lawyers. Um, they own their own, they have their own firm. And she graduated from Stanford undergrad, Stanford Law, had a very easy path laid out before her. And she decides to join the Marines instead of that because she wants to jump into seeking justice hands on. She doesn't want to be in an office running around getting coffee for people. She wants to see change in the world now. How much of her backstory do you know? You obviously know that, but do you know, was there a catalyst that made her want to join the Marines or was it just her overall sense of wanting to do good? Um, I, I think honestly, like, you know, you hear stories. Um, I've heard stories from Marines that we've been working with and, and a lot of it has been like they've seen movies or TV shows where they see Marines and they just say to themselves, that's what I'm going to do. And you just know. Um, one of our Marine techs, Adriana, she was telling me that she literally, like, she just knew. It wasn't like, I'm going to consider this. She was like, nope, that's my path. And I think Harper was very much the same way. How helpful are those uh, texts on set to help you guys really understand what it takes to be a So yeah. helpful. <laughs> it's a lot of military jargon, a lot of law jargon. <laughs> and at the same time, you're also like saying it at a really fast pace. And you just got your script like maybe two days ago. So we do, we do the best we can like with the amount of time that we have. And we pull it off somehow. I don't know. What are your tricks for memorizing a script that quickly? Um, I think it's like, I think like a memory is a muscle being able to do that kind of stuff. So the more you do it, the better you get. And confidence is part of it. I feel like I used to get super nervous, um, working on camera because I'd be like, oh, I don't want to mess up. And if I do, they're going to record it forever. And like, ah, and I don't want to waste people's time because money is time and time is money. Ah. But, um, yeah, after a certain point I was like, oh, I'm just going to like trust that I know this. Um, and and honestly, like when you have great actors that you're working with, like I'm just looking up at all of my colleagues' faces and like, oh, they're so amazing. They're so incredible to work with. It makes it easier to know your lines when you have great scene partners. Yeah. And we had Luke and Anna here, and she was talking about how playing this really strong character has made her stronger in her own life. Like she, she carries herself with more confidence. Have you had any sort of impact to your life after digging into Harper? Yeah, Harper is a perfectionist. Like she really wants people to know that she's great at this job. And I think that she's also terrified of failing. Um, so I, I think one thing that I see in Harper that I can sort of like apply to myself is like, you don't have to be perfect. Sometimes messiness is beautiful and better mm -hmm. than being perfect. So, um, and when you're messy, you learn things. When you fail, you learn things. Um, so I think she just sort of like exemplifies that even more for me that like, it's so important it's so important to like let go of, of something that you imagined to be right or true in your mind and then maybe imagine that there's another side to that. So do you see her perfectionism as something that might uh, she might struggle with as yeah. the series continues? She struggles with that. I struggle with that. I also think, um, you know, so Harper has a really great um, backstory, which is she's recently gotten engaged. Now, she met him like I imagine like in school but he's he like the character of Bard who's her fiance represents her old life Re represents the life that she came from the life of privilege of wealth um of education and um of maybe like taking things for granted a little bit um but she loves her family and she loves this person. And I think a, a huge question and overarching question for Harper in the entire season is, does my life that I com come from coincide and converge with the life that I've chosen in the Marine Corps? And do the values that I learn here, do they apply to that life? Or is this a new life? That's a hard struggle. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, you especially know? that phase in her life, you know, it's just like, do you go forward or do you go back? Or Yeah, and what you know to be true when that's 
like turned on its head for whatever reason, you kind of start to like question like all of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. is it even worth it to try and balance both lives? Um, or is there something to be said where you, you know, make sure that you take care of your life, your personal life, uh, as opposed to your career and keep those separate? Yeah. Like, can you do that? Can we balance it all? Can we do it all? <laughs> we can. The answer we can. is we can. We have to choose how. Right. Maybe not all at the same time. Also. Sure. Yeah, just like maybe once and then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, on that note, this is this the first show that you're a series regular on? Yes. Yes. So what has that transition like been for you? It's been amazing because my previous um, my previous experience on set has been showing up, you know, working with people for like a day, and then you're done. Um, so it's ha it's hard to feel like you've really developed a character, or like you know, like especially like being in, coming from theater, you're like four weeks in a studio with your acting partners rehearsing. And then you do the show, and then you have another four weeks of doing it in front of people and making changes if you want. And then you have the entire run to sort of find nuances in your performance. And then like try and distill something into like a day and like five lines. You're kind of like, whoa. But it's fun. It's been fun. So then uh, has, you know, playing in like Hamilton, how has that translated to helping you sort of develop your character here? Or is there any sort of correlation or tools that you like? Yeah, use? well, I like to think like I was imagining the other day, like what if all of my, all of the characters that I've played come together in a room <laughs> and like have a party? They'd all be like, you look like me. <laughs> um, but I feel like they would all like have an amazing time together for different reasons, like coming from different walks of life and having different perspectives. And I feel like at least Harper, like if Harper and Eliza sat down and had lunch, I feel like Eliza would be so proud because Harper is what she imagined. Like Harper is like the life that she would have chosen for herself if she were around in 2019. You know what I mean? Or one of the lives. But to serve your country, to seek justice, you know, as a woman of color, serving with her fellow man, um, to to just literally throw herself into the work of doing good and trying to seek betterment for everybody. I love that. And I also feel like so many of your fans are now going to create some like fan art of your two I characters I love the fan together. art. I love it when they come together. It's so fun. <laughs> um, I think the coolest thing for me post Hamilton is seeing how you guys have all thrived. And the biggest addition I think that that musical did was adding so many performers of color into so many important spaces. I mean, the work that you guys are all doing is phenomenal. Do you ever sit back and you see Anthony or David or Lynn and you're just like, we're doing all right. This yeah, is really great. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. Like, and the work is amazing. And it's like, I, like, you know, none of us knew it being in it what it was going to be, what it was going to become. You know, and you can't because you want to be present. You don't want to think like, what am I going to feel about this in 10 years? I just want to be present and enjoy and like take it all in. I felt like a sponge. Like I just wanted to like absorb everything. Um, and now being sort of distance from it, you know, it cut like it comes back in little ways. Like, you know, we did the Kennedy Center honors and that was so beautiful and a great reunion and, and you know, a reminder that like it brought us all together and we will continue to, to be together, not necessarily in a room, but spiritually connected because of that experience. Um, and just to like be in awe of each other's work and how we're like flying and soaring and it's just such a great community. It's fun for me to watch. I can only imagine for you. It's like these are your friends and everybody's thriving. It's like oh, I know. such a good feeling. It's crazy. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget like Anthony, uh, Anthony Ramos like coming in and impressing us all because we were like, who's this kid? Like, who is he? And then we were like, oh, he's quite talented, you know? And that goes for all of us too. Yeah. Being a part of something that was so big, does that change your approach of what you'll look for in future theater roles? Like, would you want to do something smaller or more off Broadway or does it since you did something that was so big and successful yeah I mean I, there's like a great I mean every every artist I think struggles with this idea which is like have I done my thing have I like done my defining thing and then if you've had that the flip side is is this the only thing that defines me 
So there's like, it's kind of like a, is this like a lose-lose situation here? But it's actually a win-win situation because, you know, as an artist, you want to make sure that you're always keeping yourself on your toes, that you're, um, you know, seeking challenges where people, you know, people want to put you where they want to put you. Like, oh, you look like this character? Okay, you can be cast as that character. But you have to, like, really work to convince people that you can stretch yourself because that doesn't happen unless you want it for yourself. So I feel like, you know, what I'm interested in is, like, rooms where I can be with people who are better than me. I want to surround myself with people who are better than me. And uh, I want to work in incredible rooms, just telling incredible stories, um, no matter what medium it is, uh, and, and like try and keep that as the, the base. Like it needs to be at least that. And like, you know, not everything's perfect, but you still have to feel like you've accomplished something at the end of the day, whether that's learning something or being so successful in like a successful hit show or a show that fails and you're like, oh, hmm, I wonder why that happened. Not because of me, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's out of your hands sometimes, you know? I do like that focus on personal development and just looking for new challenges and things that are different. You can never really go wrong if that's where you're starting from, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And so what else uh, do you have going on? Obviously, the code is a hit, but are you do working on any other projects? I am. I'm working on some animated films right now, which is really exciting. I'm not really allowed to disclose exactly what they are yet, but I will say they're really exciting. Um, and in terms of like that idea of stretching yourself, I feel like... I am accessing like a very different, maybe sillier side of myself, um, which is nice because we have a drama here and Eliza's life was like so <laughs> like just devastating and beautiful. But like, you know, it's nice to not only feel like I'm a, like a, an accomplished, like, like well-versed actor where I can do different things, but just to like give your mind and body like a break to like have something different happening where you can like really, you know, put yourself in someone else's shoes and experience like horrible, horrible trauma. And at the same time, put yourself in somebody else's shoes and experience like amazing joy. Your voice is also a tremendous instrument. Thank you. Um, <laughs> really, and it is an instrument. I mean, it's beautiful. Um, but does that make playing a voice character, I'm trying to imagine like, do you have like crazy control of your voice? Can you do a lot of different things with it? I can do some pretty crazy things with my voice. Um, that like that I get surprised at. And at the same time, you do have to like really make sure you're paying attention to vocal health. Um, Cause when you're recording something in a studio, you're like repeating things over and over and over again. Um, and it's like two hours of you just like trying to get a line or, or get a phrasing right on something. So it can be like very vocally taxing. Um, but other than that, like it's super fun and, and I feel like I get to throw a lot of like paint colors on the wall and you know, and we'll see, we'll see what happens, but yeah. Do you have different vocal exercises then for when you do, you know, obviously a musical versus voice acting? Yeah, I mean, it depends. Like, I feel like um, with the code, we were, I mean, I was like literally in my trailer, just like trying to like get my mouth around like really big, long, very articulate words. Um, whereas like in Hamilton, I was like trying to like, Make sure that I can like sing all those notes and you know get all, get the range uh, the range of the notes like especially up there. Uh, maybe on a day when I'm feeling sick, I'll warm up more. Maybe a day when I've like you know had my morning and I've been chatting with my friend all morning, then I'll go to set. I'm like I don't need a warm up. I've just been like warming up by drinking coffee with my friend. You know, so it varies. Yeah. Uh, I saw some behind the scenes footage of Anna playing the guitar and singing mm -hmm. and then like a little watch party where you're singing. So it's still a part of the mix. It's just she, like kind of a musical crew. Oh, it is a very, I mean, like the, the magic of being on a set and being with people for hours and hours on end, like funny, cool, weird, interesting things happen. That would never happen otherwise. Like if you were like at a nine to six, sort of like, okay, bye guys, see you later. Like we're here for like two hours, like who's got a guitar? <laughs> Who can sing? Who's got a funny joke? Who's got a dance? You know, it's like, it's it's so great because we, we keep each other's energy up. But Anna Wood, I love her. She has such a special place in my heart because she is a musical theater nerd. She loves musical theater. She loves musicals. And like when we met, it was like fireworks. We were like, you're really fun. She's like, I know, you're really fun too. Let's do something fun together.
yeah. And like, that's just our relationship. I love that though. When you meet a friend as an adult and you're like, oh wait, I like you. You like me too. Let's yeah. No. Yeah. Like it it's feels like simple. we met on the playground and we're like, okay, do you want to play something? We're like, okay, great. Sounds good. Yeah. I love that. I know our audience has a couple of questions before we yeah. get out of here. We have two right there. Um, we, you kind of already answered this, but do you think as an actress of color, your opportunities have gotten better since you started? And I also wonder if there's a musical role that you're dying to play that you haven't done before. Mm, thank you for that question. Um, I feel like definitely my perspective on being an actor of color has changed since I first got to New York, since I first got into the business. Um, I feel like, you know, I, I came to New York as a student and I studied acting and you're asked to play roles and people and ages and races that you uh, wouldn't necessarily be cast in in the outside world. Um, but for the sake of a learning experiment and like trying to throw yourself into um, a part and a role and do the best that you can, you're really like, honestly, it's, it's like a really wonderful, um, like empathetic experience where you can like learn from that. And then when you get out, you're sort of like, people put you where, where you look like you belong. Whether that's because of the way you talk or how high your voice is or how low your voice is or how tall you are, or how short you are, your weight, um, what the color of your skin is, you know what I mean? Like all of these things go into it because at the end of the day, we are telling stories. So like sometimes that matters in storytelling. Telling a story of you know a Chinese family in the 1950s is very different than telling a story of a Chinese family in 2019 you know, but for different reasons. So like, I feel like I've become more aware, um, especially in the past couple of years, because we ultimately are all trying to understand each other better. Like, I think that's what, that's, that's like, we need that. We need theater, we need art. We need to see ourselves in the art that we make. Um, we need to make efforts to think outside the box and go beyond business models of what works. Um, because when you do that, you're not making art, you're making business. So like what's, you know, at, least, at least for me, that's not the kind of stuff that I wanna see. I wanna see things that ask questions, that show me things that I wouldn't see on my own. And the beauty of film and television and of theater, of the audience, of you guys, is that you're, a, you're inherently a part of that. Like we need you to, to make it work. Like it's magic, like art is magic. It doesn't work without the audience. Um, so your second question is a role that I'd like to play, a musical role. Um, oh gosh, I think Dot in Sunday in the Park with George. Um, that would be great. And um, hmm, I mean, I don't know in, in what world this would happen, but if there was ever a production of Floyd Collins where I could be Floyd Collins, <laughs> That would be really cool. Just manifest it, just put it out there. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Why not? And one last question. Hello. Hi. Um, are there any bodies of work that inspired you to get into this industry? Ooh. Um, hmm. That's a really great question. I feel like I, my, like my first memories of being inspired by a piece of art, piece of performance art, was watching um, Shakespeare because like it was accessible. It's like, you know, it's everywhere. Um, no production is the same than another one. And um, I saw a production of The Tempest and I remember being like, just transported to another world and thinking to myself, oh, like they're doing what I do like on the playground. They're like playing and like imagining and pretending to be other people that they're not. That's that's a job? Great, sign me up, <laughs> you know? Does it still feel like playing for you? Acting? Yeah. I mean, you, that's what you want to set yourself up to do. And sometimes it's hard, whether it's like, you know, you're out in the rain and you're shooting like with like, you know, no clothes on and you have to pretend to be warm, but you're freezing cold, you know what I mean? Like, it's all about, like that's where like craft I think comes into play. And then like the art is that magic that I think I talk about with like your audience, with your scene partner, something that is created because you're with people and like without each other, it wouldn't exist, you know? 
Well, you're always a joy to watch, whether it's on stage or on the code. Thank uh, you. I've been a fan of yours for a really long time, so it's been great to chat with you. Thank you. Thank um, you. And if you guys want to check out the code, it airs Mondays at 9, 8 central on CBS. Give it up for Philip with you. Thank you. Thank you.